As we embark on another season of racing, we start to see larger marketing efforts from NASCAR and its television partners. If you watched any of the NFL playoff games that were on Fox, you saw ads for both the Clash at the LA Coliseum and the Daytona 500. In these ads, you see the same drivers over and over again. Hell, they'll be on the thumbnail of this video, in fact. It's always some combination of Chase Elliott, Bubba Wallace, and Kyle Larson. The reason for that is because they're the only drivers that are both young and actually elicit a reaction from people, both positively and negatively. Denny Hamlin enjoys being the villain, but he's been around for a while. And Ryan Blaney is such a neutral driver that even after his championship, he doesn't really evoke emotion in other people besides his biggest fans. You'd be hard pressed to find a driver outside of those five on a network ad for the next race, despite there being plenty of good drivers to choose from. Ross Chastain has drummed up his share of moments, and William Byron drives the legendary 24 car and is coming off a great season. And this past week, NASCAR Full Speed debuted on Netflix, showing a behind the scenes look at some of NASCAR's biggest stars. And surprise, surprise, who did we see? Larson, Bubba, Hamlin, Blaney, and Chase Elliott was only left off because the series focused on playoff drivers. Elliott didn't make it due to his injury and suspension. I promise this all ties into the main gist of this video. Last August, Adam Stern of Sports Business Journal reported that NASCAR was considering starting a program to effectively pay drivers who market themselves and draw attention to the sport. The story said, quote, The Daytona Beach based company is said to be preparing to invest millions of dollars into the program, with one person familiar with the talks putting the figure at $20 million to start. The program would be funded at least in part through NASCAR's media rights dollars. The sport currently makes $820 million per year for media rights from Fox and NBC, but is expecting that average annual value to be higher from 2025 on. NASCAR did finalize their future TV deal with Fox, NBC, TNT, and Amazon Prime. My question about this is why should the burden be on the drivers to market themselves and not the suits whose job it literally is to do that? It's like NASCAR is really trying to market everything except the racing product, which is ultimately what people should stay for at the end of the day. I feel like they think that having a Netflix series will draw people in like it did for F1, ignoring the fact that F1's massive explosion was due to factors like a certain illness-induced staycation, if you know what I mean, causing people to watch Netflix, and their incredible 2021 season. And now, because F1's on-track product has been terrible, the growth has flatlined. I understand that NASCAR is in an uphill battle to try to gain a younger fan base, but the fact that they're willing to pay drivers to essentially be caricatures of themselves reeks of being inauthentic. It has often been said by fans of other racing series that NASCAR is the WWE of motorsports, and they sure aren't doing anything to dispel that. The best part about drivers of yesteryear was their individual personalities, how they were able to grow a strong fan base or accrue a bastion of haters. Recently drivers have become watered down due to not wanting to upset the dwindling number of sponsors still remaining. This is really not a NASCAR issue but rather a societal one with constant pressure to not upset anyone. And with how the American economy has evolved, anyone coming up through the ranks now has to come from incredible wealth. You're not going to be able to make it through sheer determination and a bit of luck like how it was for most of NASCAR's history. For example, when I watched ARCA as a kid in the early 2000s, you had a nice mix of series veterans like Frank Kimmel or Bobby Gerhart, and a group of young guys trying to break into the top levels of NASCAR. Car counts were high, and it was a series that had its own identity. If you watch an ARCA race today, you'll see small fields, even after cost-cutting measures like spec engines and composite bodies, and a lack of competitive cars. And in the few competitive cars, it's all rich high schoolers who have never been told no in their lives, turn their cars into weapons as soon as something doesn't go their way. This is supposed to be the next generation of NASCAR stars, and this is what we're going to be getting? The lower ranks of auto racing today is a microcosm of American society, where the amount of green you have or who you know trumps your capability. To wrap all this up, NASCAR's biggest problem isn't that the drivers don't have personalities. It's that no one will let them have a personality that isn't directly endorsed by NASCAR, its TV partners, and sponsors. Even we as fans hate drivers that quote, whine or complain, but I'd rather see that raw emotion rather than a generic post-race interview. Fans love to hate Tony Stewart and Kyle Busch because of that, but by the end, Stewart was a fan favorite, and Kyle Busch is now one of the more popular drivers in the field. I understand that not everyone is going to be fiery and bombastic, but it hurts NASCAR that Chase Elliott is more reserved. At the end of the day though, we can't go from one extreme to another. You can't force him or Ryan Blaney to be more rambunctious or vice versa. The funny thing is though, 
If they fix the aero package on short tracks and road courses, the racing itself is actually pretty good, even better than it has been for much of the past decade. Unfortunately, it seems like they're not focusing on that. When you get an entertaining race and something crazy happens organically, iconic moments are created. The sad reality is that in the past 20 years, those moments are few and far between. Most memorable moments in recent times have been the result of silly cautions or general gimmicks that have plagued the sport. Bill France didn't have to come up with some elaborate scheme to get Donnie Allison and Kelly Yarbrough to start beating the crap out of each other at Daytona in 79. Drivers can still be rock stars, competitors worth rooting for and against, we just have to let them embrace themselves and not hold them back. I think the sport is in a better place than it was five years ago, but there's still plenty to do that can improve things. Having a real championship format and continuing to be flexible and try new things with the schedule can help. I don't think Dale Earnhardt ever had to be told to market himself. He obviously built a large fortune late in his career with all the merchandise, but his driving style created the Intimidator persona. His brand was built entirely off what happened on the racetrack, not on some deep dive reality TV series. Let me know, how would you like to see NASCAR market itself and its drivers? Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.